Welcome to Natural Pets TV. I'm Greg Tilford and today I'm joined by two wonderful experts in the field of holistic animal care, Dr. Ken Tudor and Heidi Navala. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about jo bones, joints, arthritis and all of the issues that we see so commonly in so many dogs, cats and animals throughout the United States and abroad. There's a lot of different onsets to this, aren't, aren't there, doctor? I mean. Yeah, and the leading one is obesity, believe it or not. Hmm. Um, we used to think that fat is a, a storage unit for uh, energy and uh, provided insulation, but now we know it's the largest uh, hormone secreting uh, organ in the body. The human uh, fat produces over 100 um, uh, hormones and dogs, uh, cats elaborate about 40. And guess what, they're all pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the animal's living in a state of fever 24 7 365 so we're seeing kind of a cascade effect it, everything's exactly. out of balance by the obesity and then of course the weight bearing onto all these Correct. joints and you know and the hammering of joints yeah and the a, aging a process issue. itself exactly yes, I know exactly what you're talking about with the aging <laughs> process. Yeah. and uh, I guess looking at the body systems the the arthritis is impacted by musculoskeletal, by hepatic and immune system, right? So that ties into the inflammatory response you're talking about. And diet has to factor into this at some point, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, to, to uh, moderate weight, for sure. Um, but then um, we want to not have a diet that promotes inflammation as, either, as well. So we want a fairly high fat diet for, for pets, but uh, minimal enough that we aren't processing fat to the point of making all these oxidative products um, that then help um, with the destruction of the joints, absolutely. You know, and, and part of the picture from my perspective is, you know, one of the major contributing factors is that there's oftentimes a really poor metabolism of waste products. and poor elimination of waste products and you end up with things, for instance, poor protein metabolism and, and excess uric acid, which binds with calcium and adds to the situation. You know, it, it all points back to the importance of diet and, um, and good waste elimination. Well, you know, I have to, I have to be honest, in, in, in veterinary medicine, we aren't that far with, with uric acid because we have not experienced those issues mm. as they are prominent in humans. Um, so when we talk about uh, ammonia and uric waste in animals, um, it's not nearly uh, as monumental as it might appear to be in humans. Um, but having said that, that just means we haven't investigated it, you know, uh, because we are not seeing gout, if you will, in, in animals on a regular basis or even a, uh, occasional basis. So um, that area, it's, it's really hard for us in veterinary medicine to address because we don't deal with those type of arthritis in our animals. Mostly it's uh, uh, inf inflammation of either autoimmune origin, uh, you know, imbalances in the immune system that, that, that Heidi was referring to, um, and less imbalances in terms of, of waste uh, processing because uh, as long as our, our patients are eliminating uh, through their kidneys and liver, uh, their bodies are generally doing a pretty good job. Doesn't mean there's not snafus there, but um, that has not been a, a problem for us. Is there a perspective on the metabolism of other products that go into the diet that perhaps carnivores can't digest and metabolize? as efficiently as protein. It makes total sense to me that there would be less issue with protein metabolism since they are metabolically set up Correct. to digest protein. But what about things like grains and, and other constituents of the diet that is kind of abnormal to the species? Yeah, I, again, that's an area that is highly um, charged <laughs> when you have <laughs> discussions right. about them. Um, uh, being a, a, a veterinarian who designs homemade diets for, for animals, I use a lot of carbohydrates because it minimizes the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, because intrinsically, there's nothing wrong with grains other than the, the fact that there are, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them intrinsically with regards to allergens. Uh, their common misconception is that grains are, are potent allergens and it's not true for two reasons. One is um, you can only be allergic to protein. Right. And, and grains are not loaded with protein. The, the exception would be wheat, yep. you know, corn. Um, and corn is not uh, one of the highly rated uh, uh, allergens. So, um, but they do provide inexpensive calories. So having said that though, do, do the dogs need it? Well, not really. Do we need it? Not really. 
um, you know, we can get by with, with much less carbohydrates because the whole job of the, the body's insulin um, glucagon system is to produce sugar when it's not available. So uh, animals, us, we only need a certain amount of sugar um, to um, maintain uh, energy for the heart, energy for the brain. Um, and unlike um, us, dogs don't store a lot of glycogen, so they have to kind of make sugar on the run. So they really don't need a, a high sugar content. But having said that, does it create waste? We don't know. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's really not a lot of evidence that carbohydrate metabolism in animals uh, creates waste products. Do you think that toxin exposure has any role in arthritis presenting or joint inflammation presenting? What toxins are, do we We're mean for well, spices? Well, environmental toxins mm -hmm. that, that our pets are, right. are, are, are exposed to just like we do, or even the synthetics or the preventives that we expose them to which are, can be beneficial, but do you think that has a role at all in the presentation of arthritis? I don't know. I, I mean, I, no, nobody knows. <laughs> That's what we talk about yeah. all the time. <laughs> nobody knows because everyone accepts the fact that toxins and waste exist, but no one ever identifies what they're talking about. You know, uh -huh. when we say environmental toxin, what is precisely is the toxin you're talking about? You know, I'm Just, still right. science-based, yeah. and so when I have want to read a study, I want to know X, toxin that we're concerned mm -hmm. about and then double blind controlled as mm -hmm. to its effect. Right. right. Okay. See, for, from my approach and with a lot of the holistic vets I work with, oftentimes we, we start focusing on liver function and the removal of waste just to assure that there isn't an excess of toxins Absolutely. and the liver is working at its optimum potential, not just at the removal of waste but also the, the metabolism of, of foods and grains mm -hmm. and the proper, you know, production of enzymes and all of the things you know, the liver does, it's huge. So we often start from, from inside the liver to assure that the body is, in a sense, as clean as possible. So there's not all these contributing factors and the immune system can work in an un unencumbered way without having to deal with things that shouldn't have to. Yeah, I agree with that. And, yeah. and, and my holistic approach in, in veterinary medicine, it, and, and having made the remarks previously, is probably more integrative in that I still mm -hmm. try and wed uh, traditional uh, mm -hmm. science with uh, holistic science, is to do exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, you, you and Heidi are probably more experienced with regards to the diversity of herbal products and, 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 and those types of of uh, compounds, you know, um, right. that can help in with regards to that. Um, with me, when I look at something, I want to know what it is in that compound, in that herb, mm -hmm. that is precisely making the change I want, right. and what, how does it work, and what does it do? Right. And I think the biggest thing with herbal, you know, and uh, using uh, natural products is, does it contain enough to really get the job done? Mm -hmm. We don't exactly. have a lot of studies. Yeah, right. we don't have a lot of studies right. there, and 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 that's the the beauty of holistic medicine, and and, and what you guys do, uh, and the impetus you've actually thrown to the veterinary world <laughs> is that I, I belong to the uh, American uh, Holistic Veterinary Medical Association and we have a whole arm that is promoting double-blind controlled uh, research on these various aspects, various mm -hmm. herbs, various treatments. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it yeah. occurs to me that must be where I've seen you before because I'm usually at that meeting, you know, and you, you, <laughs> it's the first time We've met personally, but I've, I've seen you before, so it's probably at the AHVMA conference. No, because I've never been there yet. I'm <laughs> going this year. Well, I took a stab in the well, dark. We're all in the wellness industry for exactly. the past, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I first started getting into the holistic animal thing, we often differentiated between what would be considered chronic arthritis and what was the result of injury or an acute mm -hmm. problem. But what I'm starting to see now is that a lot of the supplements we're using are the same. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're, we're, we're basically approaching the end product. You know, notably, uh, you know, as an herbalist, I, I, I'd like to mention the value of turmeric, which has had a lot of recent research, not just for its anti-inflammatory properties, but because it has very good liver supportive properties. And especially when used in conjunction with bromelain, it has very good anti-inflammatory properties that um, have been compared with a lot of the non-steroid non -steroid anti-inflammatory drugs without putting actual pressure on the liver, but rather supporting the liver too. But what are your thoughts on glucosamine and chondroitin and how is the best way to use those kind of supplements? 
Well, I try and get all my patients on curcumin, uh, which is the active yeah, ingredient course, in turmeric, yeah. um, not only for its, its uh, arthritic protection and uh, uh, liver aid, but also the anti-cancer um, properties mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. although we haven't studied as much, I, I think are probably there. So um, all of my patients, I try and do three things actually, is get them on uh, curcumin, Mm -hmm. get them on fish oil, another mm -hmm. highly inflammatory um, agent, right. and get them on probiotic because we do know that the immune system of the gut is directly related to the immune s internal immune system mm -hmm. and arthritis is an immune system problem gone wild. Immune whether, mediated, re mediated disease. disease. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather, whether it's a result starts with injury or starts with age or mm -hmm. starts with uh, you know autoimmune, uh, it, we want to get the immune system right, and right. so that's why I, yeah I do use those products. One thing we're talk we've been we've been talking about continually in this show is the need for diet, like you're talking about um, supplementation with fish oils, pro probiotics, and digestive enzymes. But we also have been talking about herbs that integrate well with glucosamine or MSM and those more common, commonly used. And they kind of bridge a gap, or they can potentially bridge a gap phytochemically. Um, for some, like for like RA, there's, you don't necessarily want to expose the pet to something that's an immunostimulant. So there are herbs like Temeruri, who, that it doesn't, it's a, P, a PKC inhibitor, so it doesn't, doesn't have that effect on the body. And it's just a, it's a nice supplementary addition mm -hmm. to all those other, and it doesn't contraindicate. So, right. um, and then turmeric or cur curcuminoids and turmeric is fantastic. Uh, in in cases of uh, degeneration in the cartilage tissue itself, and uh, this this is being studied, and so you'll appreciate if there's a double blind study. There's more uh, South American research on on this. Um, in just in those regions, but Kamu Kamu is another one because mm, okay. it's been studied for its effect. For, well, it, it stimulates collagen production, and it has a lot of other uh, uh, instances in the body, but it's it's doing some good in testing in terms of when it comes to that degenerative decline around the cartilage and the bones and the tissue and that kind of thing. That's fantastic because right now most of us veterinarians are relying on MSM, you mm -hmm. know, for that mm -hmm. that same property, um, and it has some some side effects at, at higher doses, mm -hmm. and so uh, that's good to know mm -hmm. uh, because. Uh, and I do know that, that other parts of the country or, or the world are doing more studies than we are in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We, we mm -hmm. tend to, to take a very, very conservative step into <laughs> right. alternatives right. And, then, and then trying to, to prove them. But, but that is uh, getting better. So I think, uh, and the, the public demand for what you folks do and, and for, Cheers, what, yeah. for what I'm doing is, is, is such a, a, a fulminating wave now. We have no choice. And, and most veterinarians that I see um, that are practicing fairly traditional medicine are claiming to be somewhat holistic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they are they're, starting they're to. They're recognizing their clients' yeah. want. Yeah, they're yeah. starting to add these products, these natural yeah. products, and to, yeah. see, to measure the benefit, too. And it yeah. seems to me like, uh, you know, we're both going in the same direction now because we're starting to realize that arthritis, it's all inflammation. It's all It's inflammation. endothelial yeah. disruption and yeah. inflammation. And it, it's immune mediated, and it's it's a deeper issue. I, you know, I, the allergy picture is very similar. Correct. You know, the immune system is working against itself in a in a way that doesn't make sense. Correct. You know, and it's all about imbalance, and it's all about getting the right food, the right supplements, and and putting things back into balance preventatively and curatively, right. if you will. So, you know, there's a lot to think about, but it all, it all starts with diet. It all starts with the lifestyle. It starts with taking the right care of your animals early on in life, preventing the obesity picture, um, you know, it, it can be confronted. I think the human side is doing a better job than ever at preventing these kind of disease symptoms and these diseases. And um, I think we can do it for our animals as well, you know. Absolutely. And you know, you mentioned that you're an integrative veterinarian and the truth is, is that virtually everybody I work with from the American Holistic Veterinary Mo Medical Association or as far away as Japan integrates conventional medicine right. into, and you know, 40% of people in your profession have an interest in what we do. And, right. and I say that because when I started getting into this years and years ago, 20 years ago, it seemed like there was this line drawn, drawn in the sand. I can't do allopathic medicine because I believe in holistic. And of course, there, you know, there was this always butting heads but now we're we're, we're coming together and it, i think it's working it's working very well yeah I, I i agree i um and and certainly the 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 public wants it and uh 
certainly, you know, and Hippocrates said it first, you know, first do no harm. And, and, and when you look at the perspective of what you're saying, you know, starting with puppies and wellness and diet and supplements that make sense, uh, you know, at the, for the age groups, uh, which I think we're going to talk about in some mm -hmm. other segments, <laughs> um, is to me the best medicine because when I went, graduated from vet school, I know this sounds stupid, but I felt that when I graduated, my job was to wake up every morning and try and put myself out of work that that's what a doctor was supposed to do, yeah. was to promote wellness to prevent illness. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that's utopian. I mean, that's never going to happen. But the point is, is the, the way our profession is structured is to treat the ill patient, not to nurture the well patient. Well said, sir. Mm -hmm. Very well said. And with that, you know, we're running out of time. Thank you very much for joining us today on Natural Pets TV. And join us next time. Financial and other considerations have been provided by Animal Essentials, Natura Pets Organics, the National Animal Supplement Council, and the Well Dog Place.